Hi, I'm going to present a lesson to you today called Plant Still Life Painting. We're going to make it with egg tempera paint, so eggs and food coloring. We're going to be inspired by Henri Rousseau. Do you know the history of egg tempera paint? It's quite interesting, actually. Egg tempera paint was wildly popular among early Renaissance artists. Botticelli, Gecko, Franconcello, and then fell out of use with the late Renaissance artist of Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, when oil paint was introduced. The fast drying paint is applied in thin transparent layers and is notable for its lack of color deterioration over time. So how is egg temper paint made? To make egg temper paint, powdered pigments culled from things such as stones, sticks, bones, and the earth were mixed with water and then tempered with a binding agent, such as an egg. And when they were tempered with eggs, they were called egg tempered paints and eventually earned the nickname egg tempera. So here's Henri Rousseau's hungry lion attacking an antelope that he painted in 1905. It's oil on canvas. Henri Rousseau was a self-taught artist. He didn't start painting until he was 42. He was alive from 1855 to 1910. He lived in Paris, France. He actually didn't even end up going to the jungle to paint these paintings. He went to the botanical garden in Paris, France and looked at plants there, studied them, painted and drew them there. So now we're gonna get started on our plant still life painting. So you're gonna set up some plants from your house or you can go outside and get some plants don't pull the flowers from your neighbor's garden. Then you're gonna draw your still life. You're gonna arrange it however you want. You can change the, the planter, you can change the plants, you can change the way the leaves kind of look. It's really up to you. Then you're gonna make your egg temper paint. This is the fun part. You're gonna take the egg yolk and divide, separate it from the egg white. Then you're gonna add food coloring to it. As you can see in this picture, I took the box of food coloring and I created paint that was red, yellow, blue, and green. I used about 10 drops of food coloring to each egg yolk. So there's four egg yolks there. Then I painted my still life. Now remember, egg temper paint dries very quickly. So here's some examples of ones that I painted at my house. Now here, I wanted to just show you a video of myself drawing my still life and creating the paints. Now, I'm just gonna show you a portion of this video. I've also linked the rest of the video in our lesson on the elementary art website. So you can see more parts and pieces of this video, but I thought it would be really helpful to at least show you the beginning of it. So you can see how I was drawing um, the plant that was in front of me, and then I took the egg yolk and I created my egg temper paint. It's not too hard to separate the eggs from the yolks, as you can see. Then what I did is I, as you can see here, I did multiple drops and I took a paintbrush and stirred up the colors. Right here, as you can see in this video, I used red, green, and blue. And then I later went back and I made yellow. And then you will also see that I made um, brown eventually after I figured out exactly that I needed brown. So as you can see, as I'm painting here, the, uh, the colors mix really well. But, you know, I've sped up the video so that it's so that you can see it more quickly. Um, but I did have to paint pretty quickly in order for the egg yolk to not dry. What's great about this media is that you can get um, some really great overlapping of color, but also what's really fun is that because it dries so quickly, you just have to have fun with it and, and not worry so much about your mistakes and whether it looks perfect or not. And you can adjust uh, your painting and change things. Um, one thing that Henri Rousseau was really good at is he just decided to work with his imagination. He wasn't so worried about if the leaves were exactly right. He put in animals that he thought were uh, fun animals to have in his paintings based on what he thought would be interesting in his painting. So you can do the same thing. 
Now, as you can see right here, I am making brown. So I took a little bit of all three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and I created brown. So then I'm painting the base and the, the um, I decided not to put the stones that were in my, in my flower pot, excuse me, that my plant pot, and then I added the table, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of a window in the background. I'm also gonna show you a second painting that I did that I showed, and I will just show you a little bit more about uh, the colors that I produced. And um, as you can see, I ended up adding a little bit more details to this painting, but I had a lot of fun. And it also was great because I decided that it was really nice to have um, it was really nice if I could have um, you can look up close and you can see some really great um, designs. Thank you. Always test your paint out to see if you like the color. Enjoy your lesson.